On the morning of January 6th, he tweeted, we must fight for election integrity, the Constitution, and the preservation of our republic. It will be my honor to help lead that fight in the Congress today. That was Congressman Mike Johnson, now the Speaker of the House, announcing that he would help lead the crusade to overturn the 2020 election. When the state of Texas asked the Supreme Court to throw out election results in four states, Mike Johnson led House Republicans in signing a legal brief in support of that challenge. As voting rights lawyer Mark Elias puts it, the newly elected Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, is no ordinary Republican election denier. He was a ringleader in one of the most dangerous efforts to overturn the results of the 2020 election. He used his position as a lawyer and member of Congress to legitimize the fringe legal theory underpinning the big lie. Other than former President Donald Trump, he is arguably the most culpable federal elected official in what transpired on January 6, 2021. Joining me now is Mark Elias. He is, of course, the powerhouse lawyer who won more than 60 different lawsuits against Republicans and the Trump campaign when they tried to overturn the outcome of the 2020 election. Mark is also the founder of Democracy Docket. Thanks for being here, Mark. I found um, your writing on this to be stirring and distressing. And given the position of importance you assigned to Congressman Johnson, why has he avoided deep investigation and possible prosecution up, up until this point? No, it's a great question, Alex. You know, I wrote uh, a piece for Democracy Docket on September 8th. This is before anyone knew who Mike Johnson was, saying that the biggest omission from the, the Washington, D.C. federal indictment and the Georgia indictment was the role of the people involved in that Texas lawsuit. And there's no one more central to that lawsuit than Mike Johnson. Now, I speculated why that may have been left out. It might have been that you know the prosecutors felt like they had enough without it. They may have had enough lawyers, God knows. They had enough Republican lawyers already in play. I, or it may have just been that, that, that they didn't want to involve uh, the Supreme Court, which was obviously uh, a part of uh, you know, where this brief was, was filed. But I think it is very, very serious conduct that we saw. And as I said, there is no federally elected official who bears more culpability for January 6th than uh, the now speaker. What do you make of the fact that we are barreling towards another presidential election and the Speaker of the House is now Mike Johnson? In terms of election integrity efforts and the movement behind that, do you feel like it is stronger and that the, the sort of insurance policy is a better one this time around? Look, I think you can see this both ways. On the, on the one hand, you know, there were reforms made to the Electoral Count Act. That is a positive. That's the law that governs how these, how the counting of, of uh, electoral college votes are supposed to happen in the, in the House in a joint session. But on the other hand, we know that the group of Republicans, including Mike Johnson, are lawless. So they probably won't care much what the law says. And we have seen democracy under attack now for years by the likes of people like Donald Trump and Mike Johnson. And that system of democracy that relies so much on good faith has withered. And so what Republicans have done is they have essentially given John Eastman a gavel, right? The difference between Mike Johnson and John Eastman are different fringe legal theories, and one got indicted and one got promoted. Do you think there are other ways that people who are interested in having a free and fair election should be preparing or other systems that need to be strengthened ahead of 2024? Yeah, look, there's a role for all of us. I think if you're in a state, you know, there are things you can do in your states to strengthen and harden democracy. You can make it harder for people uh, to act as election vigilantes, which we saw uh, uh, right-wing organizations do. We, you can you can hire more poll workers and, and make sure that uh, election officials are doing their job. So uh, if you're an ordinary citizen, you can frankly just stand up in your town square, whether it's your, 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 uh, your online presence, your social media, or your group of friends who grab a cup of coffee on the weekends and just educate them on what Republicans like Mike Johnson are planning. Because if we're all more educated and we all know what's happening, it'll be easier to combat. Mark Elias, um, it, is, <laughs> it is an important time to be understanding the depth of the work that uh, Mike Johnson was engaged in to turn the results of the 2020 election over to Donald Trump, and it is even more important given his role today as Speaker of the House. It's great to have you on the program. Thanks for, thanks for taking some time tonight, Mark. Thank you.